Do you like free open source software that's written in Rust with a difficult to pronounce Polish name that I'm probably going to completely butcher throughout this video? Then Zizhka is for you. Uh, and by the way, if you're curious about what Zizhka means, it's pinecone in English. Uh, so maybe I'll call it that instead of just pronouncing the Polish word poorly. Uh, I think it's Zizhka or Shishka, something like that, not entirely sure. Uh, but this program is created by the same person that created Zhivkovka. I think that's how you say it, Zhivkovka. Yeah, pretty sure I got it right. Uh, or Hiccup in English. So of course, this is the application that I just demoed a couple of days ago um, that is going to remove unnecessary files from your computer. And it can also detect images uh, that are similar. So that's a really handy way to handle that because like I explained in the other video, um, images can be a little bit more difficult to tell if they're the same, or at least for a computer to tell if they're the same or not. So the developer, uh, Rafael Mikrut, which I'm sure that I also pronounced wrong, so sorry about that. Uh, he's a developer from Poland that has a couple of different Rust projects. So definitely go ahead and follow him if you're interested in free open source Rust projects uh, or just projects that are going to have funny Polish names because I think that's uh, sort of the theme behind a lot of his software is he likes to give them uh, just interesting names that sort of, I guess, stick in your head. It's sort of a marketing technique, I guess. Like they're difficult to spell and maybe difficult to remember how to pronounce. But when you see it, you're going to be like, ah, yes, that's that software that that guy makes. Um, so this one is actually a bulk file renamer. So it's going to take a whole bunch of different files and rename them based on different rules. Um, now there's a bunch of other software that's already out there that does this, um, you know, both free and open source and both proprietary, but I think this is the first one that I've ever seen written completely in Rust. So that's kind of interesting. And we can see the whole reason why for this program down at the bottom. Uh, so pretty simple, the developer felt that the other available apps out there were installing a whole lot of dependencies that he didn't want, or they would work slowly, or they would just have a very bloated user interface. So this app was born because all of the alternatives were basically slow and bloated. So that's something that I know everybody that w watches this channel is probably gonna be pretty interested in, uh, applications that are faster and less bloated. Um, so, the front end is GTK3, uh, not too bad in terms of actually having a user interface, but a lot of file renaming could probably just be done on the command line, right? I mean, that's the solution that I use for renaming the files that I copy over uh, from, or copy over to my computer from my phone. It's just a simple shell script that renames them. Now, granted, this is a very specific use case that I've got going on, which is to just copy video files off of my phone and then rename them to be associated with different video projects that I'm working on. Uh, and this application that was created here obviously does a whole lot more than that, but I'm sure that it's still possible to create a command line version of this application. Uh, especially if we go back and take a look at Jivkovka, and we take a look at their releases page. Now remember, this is a probably more, uh, what would be the word? A more complicated program, right? Because it's finding duplicate files, but it's also got that solution to find um, similar sounding files, because it can work for music and just audio files, as well as picture files. And if we take a look at the releases page for it, there are command line versions of this app available. Um, whereas if we take a look at the releases page here for Zhishka, there are no command line versions available. So um, it would be interesting if that could be built because I think that might make more sense for a program like this versus the other one. Uh, but granted, this is the very first release and it was just released yesterday. So. You know, we're not going to blow them up with requests asking for a command line version. I'm sure that if they're going to make it, it's probably uh, in the works. 
And just like his other applications, this is also multi-platform as well. So it's gonna work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And the source code is available if you want to go ahead and build it yourself. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this app in action. Uh, so the UI is really, really simple. You're basically inputting your files up here. And then down here, you're creating some rules to rename them. Uh, and then you just go ahead and run that by clicking on start renaming. Um, so when we go to add our files, you should be able to select any kind of file type and you should also be able to select hidden files as well. Uh, this should show up automatically, at least on Linux, doesn't matter what your, um, what your um, like file manager settings are or anything like that. So uh, why don't we go ahead and drill down into a folder where I've actually got some things uh, that I can run this on. All right, so we'll go into this freshly picked meme folder and then we can just select all and hit OK. Um, so here I have this freshly picked meme folder loaded in and actually why don't I just go ahead uh, and show them to you in my file manager. Uh, maybe that'll be a little bit more interesting to show uh, the renaming in the file manager itself. So these are freshly picked memes that just came in from a few local farms. Uh, and you can tell that they're fresh by the file name. So in case you didn't know, a good way to appraise whether or not you have a fresh meme uh, is just by the file name. It should be a bunch of different numbers. This is just how they grow. Uh, and you can also tell how closely together the memes were grown based off of the first few digits um, that are from the left. So like, for example, we can see that these two both begin with 1607, so they were probably grown relatively close together. Now, if you're going to distribute these memes to normies, you might want to rename them so that they don't get confused by the numbers. Uh, and obviously, if you're an evil person, you're going to add a watermark with your Twitter handle to them before posting. Uh, now again, the rules as far as renaming are pretty flexible. So, and, and you can also chain them together. So for making custom rules, there are some pretty helpful commands that are basically baked into the program. Um, so you can do things like include the files modification date. Um, you can also include like the date that it was created, things like that. Or you can just give them custom names, which is what I'm probably going to do here. Um, so these memes that I have over here, they're, um, they're pretty spicy. So maybe I'll just rename them uh, to go with something like that. So I'll call it like spicy meme. Uh, and then we'll just number them. Like they're not gonna have long numbers like this. Cause again, that's confusing. Like a normie might think it's a phone number or something. So we'll just put in um, regular numbers, which you can do right here. So I'll do N, zero, one, and three. So what this is going to do is it's going to start from the number zero when it names the files and it's going to increment by one. So like the first one is gonna be zeros and the last one will be, the next one will be zero, zero, one. Uh, and then three is how many digits you wanna have behind it, which you can see here. Um, so this is the rule that we're going to add. So then you can see the rule that I have here and you can see a preview of what it's going to do before you run it. So uh, basically exactly what I just explained. So we'll start renaming and it'll ask you, are you sure you wanna rename 231 files? Okay. And boom, it's already done. Uh, and then it also changed the sort of them because I think I had this sorted by name. Uh, so there you go. There's also some pre-built rules uh, to do some more common things. So like if you want to change the casing of the file names from upper to lower, lower to upper or whatever, uh, you can do that. If you wanted to uh, just delete like the file's name or the file's extension, you can do that. If you wanted to add numbers to the beginning or the end or uh, to some other area, you can do that. You can add text, you can replace text, you can trim text. Um, all of these things that you would probably do with, uh, I don't know, like regex rules or something like that on the command line. But there you go, a free open source uh, bulk file renamer with a GTK front end that's written in Rust. 
Uh, I still hope that we do end up getting a command line version of this. Um, I'm gonna try and say this person's name again, uh, Rafael Mikrut. So if he's watching or if anyone who knows him uh, is watching, I think a lot of people would like a CLI version. Uh, some people might consider this program having a GUI to be bloat or they might want to run it on a lower spec hardware that GTK might actually uh, tax a little bit. Um, but links to this program will be in the description as always. Try it out for yourself. Feel free to comment any interesting rules that you create and have a great rest of your day.